All right, Kyle. First off, coming off a, a really good redshirt freshman year. Thank you. Uh, Edinburgh Open champ. Uh, uh, 16-way tie for the uh, Virginia <laughs> red shirt NCO thing. national champ. Right? Yeah, they had 16 guys on it. They yeah. canceled the tournament in the middle of it. Got one match in. <laughs> okay, so first off, you're from Ashtabula. Some of the worst weather in Ohio. Yes. Tell me tell me this. I want to know this. In the that eyes of an Ashtabula in, if I'm saying that right, what, tell me what that weather was even like down there. Was it even like a, a, a speck on your radar? Was no, it, it, wasn't that, it wasn't that bad. It was like, it was kind of like sleet. I guess, and I didn't even, there was no accumulation and they canceled the whole tournament and everything for it. And you, you know, that's the one where you would have got some really good matches in there and that's like, that's, yeah. the, that's the, that's your NCAA tournament as a, as a red shirt there. And uh, you know, it's a great tournament too, but you know, to cancel that, you did win the Edinburgh Open. You beat a couple ranked guys, uh, Matty Ace, you beat Matty Ace at Penn in the finals. So you're kind of a guy that, you know, I don't think a lot of people are talking about right now, but knowing you're a sleeper, coming from Ashtabula Lakeside, which is a new school. It's yeah. only like 10 years in existence. Something yeah, it's like that. at 12. So 12 years in existence. It was like a joint, like two schools. Harbor and... Harbor and Ashtabula. At Harbor and Ashtabula joined together. So you went to a new school. There was really no tradition. But you're able to win a state title competitively in Ohio, a state finalist. Talk about, you know, kind of your ride, man. It's It's been... You're not a guy who comes from where you don't have these guys. You got Maslin Perry guys. You're not from Maslin Perry. You're not from Oak Harbor. Ian's from Oak Harbor. You know, Maslin Perry. The Palmas from, you know, all those guys are all from the, the Pittsburgh guys. That, that's strong wrestling. You don't come from strong wrestling. What got you into wrestling? And, and, and how did you get as good as you are? Um, honestly, what got me into wrestling was uh, my brother wrestled in seventh grade. And I came to his matches and um, I was watching his matches and see some guys win, some guys lose. I was like, wow, I could beat all these kids, you know. I never wrestled in my life. And then when I got to seventh grade, it was a total different story because I didn't know a thing and I ended up actually losing all of my matches. I didn't win one. You <laughs> were got, defeated as a I was seventh grader. Yes, I was defeated. I, I got pinned almost every match. And then the, uh, the next year, um, when I went to eighth grade, I had a uh, new coach, Jerry Brady. He, um, he, he was really, really big on wrestling and getting us to open tournaments and stuff. So I went from having like 10 matches to having like 40, 50 matches my in eighth grade and I ended up getting fourth at state that year and um, he moved up to the high school my junior year and that's when I, um, I made a big transition in my wrestling sophomore year freshman year I didn't really take shots I didn't do much I I didn't I honestly didn't do anything extra I didn't work out um, work out after practice or anything like that and we just that year we we went at like every day of the week we went to um, uh, we, we went to like one open tournament because you, can, you, can, you can't really wrestle open tournaments during the high school season, so it was one preseason. And uh, we went to Cleveland State on Sundays, went with uh, Burnett. We, we uh, did his little clinics or whatever, and we just did a lot of uh, extra stuff. And I worked on my offense, and uh, he was real, he helped me out a lot, a lot with that because I went from a guy who never took a shot to a guy who was taking three or four shots like a period or something like that I don't know there was a lot of output I remember yeah there was when you went from no shot guy to a lot of output guy you would get so tired you'd literally <laughs> collapse after the match I remember seeing that that's something that feels like you've really addressed it here at Kent State um, so I, th I feel like your gas tank's way better. I mean, yeah, I saw you at the state still, tournament one year. I work on it, yeah. At the state tournament one year, you literally collapsed, right? Yeah. It was crazy. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was my senior year. Uh, I, uh, match one, right? For, for strong? Well, first match, that was my junior year. First yeah, match. you like literally collapsed. Yeah, I just, it was just, it's like sometimes I just hit a, I just hit a wall. I don't know, I don't know what happened, but it was actually, uh, I, I wrestled the same kid earlier in the year and the same exact thing happened. I, I was beating him pretty bad and then I hit a wall and he almost came back and beat me. And the same thing happened at the state tournament. And then senior year, I think it was the quarterfinals, I was beating a kid by six or something like that and I just collapsed. I almost thought, ended up losing the match just because my, my conditioning is just here. It's here and there sometimes. It could, it could be better. Even here? Yeah, e even here, it could be better. I think that... Um, I don't know if it's sometimes it's just mentally for me, or it's just how I, how I warm up. Sometimes I get a really good warm up, and sometimes I just sometimes I just don't get into it. I don't know. I felt like at um, when I wrestled that uh, that kid from Arizona State, I uh, 
they messed, I don't know if they messed up my bout number or something, but I didn't really have a great warm up for that because I was, I was sleeping and then I got my name called, I ran right on the mat and um, he was beating me by like six or something like that because I was just so tired, I didn't have a great warm up and then I just I just uh, got that double on him and pinned him. It was just something, that just it just came out, it was like instinct, it, it was just instincts, but it, it had nothing to do with my conditioning because my conditioning was poor that match. Looking at your mat wrestling, you know, last year I talked to you at Edinburgh, you, you, you're able to get off the bottom. You're not riding guys now, but you're still... I'm getting better at getting You're getting the better, there's no question about it. But like in high school, man, it was like literally, you, you couldn't get off the mat. Guys yeah. could hold you down, it felt like it was a mental thing, very much so. But looking at it now, what have these coaches done to address your mat wrestling top and bottom? Uh, Coach O comes in here with me and uh, sometimes he just keys, that's what he keys in on. Like that's what we, sometimes we work on that for like half an hour, just me just getting off the bottom or, or just working on my breakdowns. Obviously my mat, my top wrestling isn't the greatest, but it's, I think it's improved a little bit from last year. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm still working on it. I'm not never going to stop working on that. So hopefully I can. Hopefully I can score some riding points this year. 197 in the MAC is loaded. Jaden Cox, NCAA champ, fifth last year. I don't think you've ever wrestled a guy like that. No. How, mo how forward do you look to that? You know, like Buffalo's got a guy, Nate Rose, guy who wrestled in the world championships this year for Trinidad. Um, uh, Abro from Eastern Michigan. I mean, they got Sean Scott from Northern uh, Illinois. They got, a, it's great, Wellington, Ohio U. These guys are really good. 197 is a really good weight. It's a situation this year where they're probably going to take six or seven guys out of the MAC, you know, depending on how the chips fall and injuries. But what can you do to be competitive and challenge like a Jaden Cox for a MAC title fell on? I think it's. I think honestly, it's, for me, it's all mental. I can't go in the match beating myself. Like if I'm if I'm wrestling Jaden Cox, I think that I should go in the match thinking that I, I can beat him because I think that I'm I could be at the level of these guys. I think that. If I put in the work and I keep I keep doing what I'm doing, I think that I could I could be ranked in the nation, possibly all American this year. I think that's that's my goal, and I think that if I if I don't believe in that, I'm selling myself short. Last year, um, kind of a, a an adjustment year for you. I don't know if you've ever been out of Ashtabula, really, have you? You've done a bunch of traveling or anything? Nah, was not it, too much. Was it weird coming to Kent State? It's only an hour, hour and 15 away, hour and a half. Was it something where it was just different? You know, you're kind of out of your comfort zone a little bit? Yeah, it was actually it was actually a big adjustment period for me. I was I was homesick a lot, and I think that uh, at the beginning of the year, that played into my, my wrestling. I, I didn't do as well as I thought I could just because mentally I wasn't all there, but it took me a while to adjust, and I think now that I've been here and I've been here over the summer, and I've been living here for a while. I think I'm. This is this is my home now, and I feel comfortable here. And I think that's going to help me a lot in my wrestling this year.